Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am finally taking down all of my Christmas decorations. It is actually 10 o'clock at night and I have been procrastinating taking everything down, but I finally have a free moment where I can get it knocked out. So I brought all of the totes in from the garage. That's how we store all of our Christmas decorations and all of our seasonal stuff. So I pulled out the totes for those and now all I have to do is take it down. If you guys are having trouble getting motivated to take your Christmas decor down, then you are in the right place. Hopefully this will give you lots of motivation to do so. And then in the next video, I'm actually going to show how I redecorate after all of the Christmas is taken down because I know that can be a really tricky time of year whenever you are decorating your home. It's that weird in between seasons where it's kind of just neutral decor. So I'm going to show what I do to bring in more simple neutral decor, but still having a really cozy feel in our house. I also have tons of decluttering and reorganizing content content planned for January and I've even started buying extra bins and stuff to organize our closets with. Make sure to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on any other content. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get to undecorating. So all of the Christmas pillows and bedding have been put away and I kind of just have a clean slate. Also, don't mind Colt back there. And I am super cozy tonight. So it is just one of those nights where I have tons of motivation to get it all done. All right, I'm starting out by bringing my totes in and I'm also grabbing some tissue paper. That way I can wrap up anything that may be breakable and just try to stack it all in the totes as nice as I can so it will be good when I pull it out next year. So there really isn't any rhyme or reason to this. I just try to group everything together in totes by room. That way whenever I pull my totes out next year, it will all be ready to go. While I'm taking down my decorations, I wanted to kind of have a little mini chat with you guys, just talking about finishing up 2020 and talking about some things that I have learned this past year that have been really helpful for me. So I've wrote down five different lessons that I have taken away from 2020 and I do feel like every year I learn different things about myself and my motherhood and my marriage and just all around as a human being and for those lessons I am so grateful for so I thought it would be fun to share those with you and hopefully they will be encouraging to you as you are going into 2021 so let's go ahead and dive in the first lesson that I've learned is to quit people pleasing. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I am definitely a people pleaser at heart. I don't like confrontation. And if it was a perfect world, everyone would get along. However, that is not the case. And I think 2020 has definitely proven that. And ultimately at the end of the day, I feel like instead of people pleasing, or searching for man's approval, we have to be true to ourselves. Otherwise, we will never find true joy or even know what our own interests, our own beliefs are. Don't make decisions solely based on the approval of others or knowing that you'll get that approval. It will literally run you ragged, and I know this firsthand. So I feel like in 2020, I have really tried my best to stay true to myself, and it has brought so much freedom. 
The second lesson that I've learned is to stop comparing my journey to someone else's. That is a hard pill to swallow, but it is true. And I really do believe that God makes us all so different and he gives us all completely individual lives with different strengths and weaknesses, opportunities, directions, and all around goal and will for our lives. So how can we look at someone else's and compare? It's really easy to do it though. And you can think that people have it all together and wish you were in their shoes or had their success or their marriage or their life or the amount of kids that they have, anything really. But ultimately that is such an empty lie. But finding joy in the journey that God has laid out for you is the only thing that brings real joy. I love the quote, a flower does not think of the flower next to it, it just blooms. I know that's such an overused quote, but it's so true. You cannot look at everyone else and base your happiness on that. It's just so empty. So I really have looked at staying in my own lane And I know it's social media, it can be so hard to not compare, but truly, truly, if you find yourself comparing your life to someone else's on the internet, then maybe reconsider who you're following, who you're investing your time watching. Your worth should never be measured by what you think of someone else's life. It's just an empty, empty lie. And I just want to encourage you guys to dig deeper, see what God says about you and your self-worth, and know that he has laid out this journey specifically for you and find joy in that. That gives me joy knowing that I have been made for such a time as this and so have you. The next lesson is reaching goals takes consistency, baby steps, a lot of grace, and realistic deadlines, or even no deadlines, which I know going into the new year, we're all going to be making our list of goals and things that we want to do in our lives to make them better or more efficient or healthy, you name it. But I just want to remind you guys that having strict deadlines on those goals can sometimes be crippling. So what I found in this past year is I put YouTube as a huge goal of mine. I really dived all in and for me, having baby steps and taking it day by day took the pressure off knowing that I'm in it for the long haul, whether it takes me one year or two years or five years, I am going to invest in this because it means a lot to me and I love it. It's a super fun hobby for me and I know that in the end, if I work hard and I'm consistent, it will pay off. And that looks different for every goal, but I do think that you can accomplish them a lot easier if you start small and do little things every day to work towards it. So go at your own pace and again, stay in your lane and don't compare. (laughs) The next lesson is fear is a liar and God still has a plan for your life. I know that 2020 has been such a year of unknowns, heartache, loss, and has been so devastating, no doubt, but God is still on his throne and working all things out according to his will. I'm a Christian and I believe in the Bible and I am not putting you down or dismissing you if you don't believe the same as me. But hear me out because this has brought my soul so much peace in a year that has been such a roller coaster. Psalms 23 4 says, Even though I walk through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. Fear not is such a common 
reminder in the word because we are often forgetful and we can try to imagine the future before it is even happened. I know I do this all the time and it leads to so much fear and anxiety. But Jesus reminds us that we can trust God as our father. He will fight for us. He will cover us and protect us and he will calm our hearts and our minds. All he asks is that we turn our eyes and fears to him instead of focusing on that specific fear. So I just want to encourage you guys with that. It has really been something that I have clung to this year because I have had a lot of fear and fearful moments of panic and um, just unknown. So I just really encourage you guys, if you are crippled by fear, turn to the word, see what it says about it, and know that God ultimately wants to protect you. And I find when I spend time with God, either reading my Bible or praying or doing a devotion, I do find that my worries go away and I am so thankful for that and just want to share that because it has been a huge lesson for me to lean on the Lord in these times and if you guys want a song to listen to you should check out You'll Always Be by Kim Walker Smith. I'll link it down below in the description if you guys want to listen but it is such a good song and I've had it on repeat this year. And the final lesson that I wanted to share is that perfectionism is for the birds. This last year, I've really taken a look at how I run my household, what my expectation is for my motherhood journey, and trying to have everything perfect is so exhausting. And I'm here to tell you that it is such a empty lie and you will truly chase your tail with it because no one is perfect and that is okay so instead of trying to run this race of having it all together instead i've really tried to focus on what truly matters in my family life here at home how we live our lives together and just doing the best at what we can instead of reaching for perfectionism just reach for doing your best and that looks different for everyone because ultimately there is no level of perfect and once we can get past that it really does give us more freedom to live our lives and to live them joyfully because we don't have that pressure. So that has helped me so much in 2020 as well as all of these lessons. So I know this was kind of long, but I hope that it encouraged you. But again, let me know what your favorite lessons from 2020 were. And also let me know your goals in 2021 as we enter in this new year. This is the last video that I'm going to have out for the year, which is so crazy. And I just wanted to say I am so unbelievably thankful for each and every one of you for sticking around on my journey with YouTube these last couple of years. It's really such a blessing to me and I love it so much and I love connecting with you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for sticking around and if you haven't subscribed, it would literally mean the world to me. So let me know if you guys are new down in the comments below. And if not, let me know how long you've been watching my channel. All of the Christmas is down except for that sign and two little trees. So 
In case you're wondering how we store our big Christmas trees, I got these Christmas bags from Walmart about probably four or five years ago and they have held up really well. They have wheels on them. So this is how we store our big trees, our more fuller ones. And then my tree that I got for King of Christmas, that one is in this tote here. And I actually really like this tote. It's got a thick lid on it with snaps and wheels. It, I got this one from Walmart as well. So that's how we store the trees. And then I do need to go get one more tote for the tree collars. And then I have some wrapping paper I wanted to save and some extra garland that needs to go. And then I need to get one more tote like that long one to store our two little trees because I still have that one up in the corner and then one up in our guest bedroom. But other than that, everything is put away in the totes. So here is the lineup. So many. I really need to invest in some new totes because these are getting worn down. There's like rips in them and stuff. But um, yeah, that is how I store them. We have some shelves in our garage. So they'll go up on them and they're all labeled Christmas. So that is is the house looking pretty bare at the moment aside from all of the stuff so i will have some fun redecorating these spaces um i know for the hutch i did pull out some copper pieces and then some amber glass bottles so i'll probably be decorating with that in some way or another and then for the open shelves over here in the kitchen, this is another area that I love to decorate. I just moved around some cookbooks. This was all already here. And then I just moved a couple things around. And then I'm going to leave everything pretty clear, I think. So I added a cutting board there. I'm gonna take these pine cones out just because they've lost their smell. Um, they still kind of look wintry, so I don't know, I might end up keeping them. And then I added more cutting boards, and then I'm going to leave the rest of this pretty plain. And then I do need to wash a rug to go right here. If you've never seen this stuff before, it is amazing. It makes your rug not move. So I think I got it at Target or Walmart, one of the two and you just put the strips down on the floor and lay your rug on top and it won't budge. So that's really helpful. And here are the shelves on either side of the fireplace. It looks so plain in here, it's crazy. But I did wanna let you guys know that I ordered some pull down Roman shades to go on our windows in here just because I feel like sometimes I do want to have some privacy even though um, we do have a privacy fence in the backyard still I feel like it needs something so that'll also provide a lot of warmth I think on these walls so those should be up in a few days I don't know if they'll be up before I film my decorate with me video though so we shall see and then I don't know what I'm gonna do on the mantle yet but it looks so plain. I kind of miss all the Christmas already. It was just so cozy, but I will do my best to make it cozy still yet. And then I have no idea what I'm gonna do for the sign. I might just take off the letters and put a different saying on there. And then I'm also going to like shift it back to where it's centered on the wall because that's gonna drive me nuts. Um, so we'll see about that. I'll either make a new sign altogether or change out the letters on that one. And then the entryway, I moved this in here. I have no idea. This is probably not gonna stay. I'm sure it won't. And then the office. So I did end up ordering another bookshelf that matches that one just because I really wanted it to be symmetrical when you walk in. So those are from Target. I just did a pickup order and got a second one. And there was so much stuff on this one. I literally just 
move some stuff over so it was way too full so anyways I'll probably move some of that as well but I'm going to vacuum the floors real quick I think and um, especially over here there's a lot of flocking and stuff on the ground and then that'll be about it it is now almost one o'clock in the morning and I'm still feeling like I've got a little bit of energy left so like I said I'm going to vacuum the floors and maybe attempt to get these totes out in the garage on the shelves and then call it a night. So hopefully this gave you tons of motivation to take down your Christmas decor. Honestly, I think the hardest part is getting started and then once you're going, you're just like game on. And I will say, I feel like taking down Christmas decorations is way easier than putting them up because you don't really have to think about it. You don't have to plan out where things are gonna go and which rooms they're gonna be in um, and all that. So just wanted to throw that out there if you feel like it's a super daunting task just dive in and get going with it i also just remembered that i have to undecorate brooks's room <laughs> because he's asleep in there and he also has a tree so i'm definitely going to need a couple more totes christmas is definitely my favorite holiday to decorate for that's why I have so many totes full of decorations, but believe it or not, I did end up going through all of my decorations before I started decorating, donated a ton of them, and then I just went through about two totes full that I donated again. So I love having a big selection, but it is a little bit overwhelming whenever I have to store it. So, but anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure you subscribe and let me know if you are new down in the comments so I can say hello. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video and I will see you guys later. Bye.